So I got out of the military in 74. I spent two weeks at home. I haven't seen my family in three years. And then I go upstate New York, because Joan and Juddie are there, my best friends, and I haven't seen them in five years. So I take a dozen New York bagels with me and a couple of bottles of wine and go upstate New York. Knock on the door, they open the door, hugs and kisses, and everyone sits down, has a couple of glasses of wine. We're reminiscing, talking about old times. Four o'clock comes, and Joan says, I'm sorry, I have to go upstairs and get dressed. I'm going out tonight. Friday afternoon, ladies night out. So Joni goes upstairs, gets dressed. Joe and I sit there and talk a little bit more, have another bottle. Five o'clock, there's a knock at the door. Joni comes running down the stairs, opens the door, and there's a guy. Now, I've been out of country for three years, and I'm thinking, okay, that's, that's odd. And Joni gives him a big kiss, turns around and looks at Joe and says, don't wait up for me, I'll probably be home around 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And he says, okay, hon, have a good time. And Joan and this guy just go out on the date. Now, I've had a lot to drink, and I'm sitting there looking at that, and finally I looked at Joe and I said, is everything okay? He says, oh yeah, we have an open marriage. And I go, open marriage? See, when I left to go, <laughs> when I left, you could buy a Volkswagen for $1,999. When I came home, you couldn't buy something that wasn't called a Broham edition. It had velour seats and it was six grand. I thought, what did you guys, we, we used to call the states the world. I said, what did you guys do to the world while we were away? Open marriage. So Joe and I stayed up all, all night together and well, you know, drinking wine and, 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 and they got up in the morning and I, I finally, I said, well, I got to go to Michigan. So I go to Michigan. Now, I've been away for a long time, right? I'm still thinking about this open marriage. I get to Michigan, within two months I meet Amy. Amy's a cute little blonde, an eco-friendly person. She would drive her car like this because she didn't want to use too much gas, you know. And she also is, uh, is kind of a, uh, an, uh, well, she's an eco-friendly person. She's the only lady I've ever known had a rototiller. And I buy a house on the GI plane, and Amy says, you want me to make a garden in the backyard? And I said, sure. So I go to work and come home, and my whole backyard is a farm. She's taking the whole thing and rototilled the whole thing, you know. She's a sweet young girl. We get to know one another. We're having a good relationship. Finally, she says, you want to come to the house for a home-cooked meal? Now, in the military, Every morning I had fried eggs until the day I left. I remember going in the cafeteria and the cook looked at me and says, you want fried eggs or scrambled? And I thought, I can have scrambled eggs? I said, well, I'll take scrambles. So he took two fried eggs and he chopped the daylights at them and threw them on the plate and said, so Amy wants to give me a home cooked meal? I said, sure. So she gives me a dress, student housing, and I go over there. It's a nice little apartment. We sit down, we have a little glass of wine, <clears throat> start to eat the meal, and 10 minutes into the wheel, I hear a key go in the lock of the door and the door opens up. And in walks a guy. And he says, hi, babe, I'm home. She says, hi, hon, how was your day? He says, oh, Larry, this is Richard. He's my husband. We have an open marriage. Open marriage. She said, are you OK? I said, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dying at one plus one equals. Don't you think you should have said something about that before Richard comes in and introduces himself as your hubby? Doesn't violate any obligations to others. In other words, you're straight up front. Put all your cards on the table. This is what it is. You okay with it? Okay, great. Then we can have the beginning of a relationship. If you get a few more cards from the deck, you got to lay them out too. Everybody's out front with everything that's going on. It's real important. Honesty, commitment, sincerity, loyalty. No coercion, no exploitation. Don't violate your commitment. If you're going to change your commitment, say, I'm going to change my commitment. And then if you're in Northern Michigan, you say, see ya. But you're upfront about everything. So. No dishonesty, exploitation, coercion, and no violation of obligations to others. <clears throat> After all, sex is an act. Morality is how we judge that act in light of certain agreed-upon conditions. 
Therefore, there is no universal standards for sexual morality except children are incapable of the kind of informed consent required to ensure that they're not being exploited. No dishonesty, no exploitation, no coercion, no violation of agreements, and never, 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 ever children. Children are incapable of making the informed decision. They can be manipulated, they can be used. Children are never allowed. When I first got here, there was a move in Georgia, there was a 14-year-old boy had intercourse with a 13-year-old girl and the Georgia representative wanted to lower the age of consent to 13. Well, of course, you can conceive then. I don't know if that's rational or not. I hear, I did some research, nationally it's 16. But in some states it's even higher. But no one wants to go lower than that. Well, there are some enclaves of people who would like to, but as far as law is concerned, they don't want to. So there's five tenets, standards of behavior that have to be observed. Now, you can call yourself anything you want, but you're not practicing libertarian moral philosophy if you don't adhere to those five. No dishonesty, exploitation, coercion. You validate your relationship with people, what you're bringing to the table, and you never include children. Any question about those five? Okay. This raises an interesting question. Should bigamy be allowed? It's just between three people. Everybody's got their cards on the table. Or polygamy. Everybody puts, and by the way, that's not one man having two or many wives. It could be one woman having many husbands. You can't do it just one way and not have it the other if you're going to be fair. If you're really going to practice libertarian political philosophy, where as long as I squint my elbows, I'm not touching anyone else's nose, everybody's in agreement, all the cards are on the table, no dishonesty, no coercion, no exploitation, no kids involved. From a theoretical point of view, should we allow bigamy? Should we allow polygamy? I certainly think bigamy is okay, but anytime I've looked at polygamy, I always see it as a religious and it's an exploitation usually of younger people. But what if it's not? What if we adhere to the rules? I'm just curious. I'm not promoting any of this. I'm not promoting traditional. I'm not promoting libertarian. I'm just curious. If the rules were actually followed, then where do you draw the line? Well, I don't know. Where do you draw the line? That's one of the questions we're trying to deal with in the last 60 years. Where do you draw the line? You don't remember TV when you could not see the bedroom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You go back to the 50s. It was called Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, I was confused at what you meant. You mean like the bedroom wasn't shown on television? It wasn't shown on TV. And when they finally showed it, they finally showed it, and it was two twin beds. That just raised ire all over the place. How dare you show the bedroom? Because bedroom is a sanctimonious place we have intercourse, of course. And then they showed him in PJs, which was even worse. Oh, that raised the whole story. And now, of course, you know, we have moved the compass. Some say too far. Maybe we need to, I don't know what the balance is. I'm not promoting it. I'm just asking you if you're going to accept libertarian political, I'm, I'm sorry, libertarian political philosophy and libertarian sexual morality, as long as you're not interfering with anyone else's freedom, why do we have restrictions when we follow the rules? No children, no dishonesty, exploitation, coercion, and everything's out on the table. Why should we have limitations? Well, the traditional people have limitations. Should there be limitations to freedom? Well, we said yes. That's what the box was all about. The box requires certain restrictions and limitations. So there are only, any more hands go up for bigamy and polygamy, or does that, why did, why does that, why is that not okay? I, I don't find anything wrong with it, I just don't like when it's exploited. Okay, I agree, but if we, if we take it out of the exploitive, is it, is it's not wrong, I don't know, it's up to you guys. Just don't put it on, on social media, no, okay. How many have, a, it's okay if you have an objection to it. I mean, I can, I, can, I can make an argument against it, but I'm just kind of curious. Are you too vulnerable today? I mean, am I now getting into everybody's? Someone will say that someone always gets left out. Someone's always left out. What does it do to you? You know, we used to call those marms, you know, or, or yeah, I don't know what you would call a guy. I mean, just a, 
a hermit, you know, I mean, just never socially inept, whatever. I mean, theoretically speaking, there, you could have the freedom, but there's always going to be some point where one of the five tenants is going to be violent. And that's why, you know, they are moving right now, where people are going, oh my god. But you can, I, I don't disagree, you can also do that in the traditional mode too. Half marriages end in divorce and that's because someone either doesn't like where they're in or someone violates the, the bonds of covenant and then someone else finds out and that's, that's the end of that. One spits and the fight's on, you know. How about same-sex orientation? Anything wrong with that under libertarian political philosophy? Two people love each other? I mean, can you love the opposite sex without including sex? Brothers and sisters, you have brotherly love, sisterly love. Can't you do the same thing with a, with a male or women to women? I know women walk arm and look. When I went down to when I went when I was in Europe, I saw this all the time. Men would walk down the street and they'd be arm in arm. They were brothers, not not biological brothers. They had a closeness to them. Men and eighty percent of the world, I think, dance together. Not with women, they dance together. We have we have taboos here that aren't visual in other parts of the world. I went down to Chile, a friend of mine, his father died and he didn't know about it for two months. His family couldn't locate him and we flew down to Chile. I wanted to be with him at his father's grave and we just walked through the grave arm in arm and no one thinks anything in cultures that are okay with male-male relationships, female-female relationships until we suddenly get sexual and then suddenly that violates some sense of traditional sexual morality. But we're a libertarian society. Courts have even adjudicated that. I forget the, course in the, the case in Texas where two men were having intercourse in their bedroom and the court said it's not the state's business. A libertarian decision. You're not harming anyone else. You're not doing harm to each other. It's not like there's some harm, physical harm or emotional harm, all that stuff. So the government has no right to put their nose in your business. We'll get that next week when we start with abortion. We'll start with rights to privacy. And how the government has no right to put their nose in your personal business as long as no one else is being violated, Carl. That was 2003 when the Texas um, lawmakers finally decided that in all 14 states where it was currently still illegal to practice sodomy and then was legal. So it's an evolving thing too. We always talk about that in libertarian political philosophy. It's an evolving thing. Women were property in 1920. Now you're not property. We had slavery. We're evolving into more and more freedom. Is there an excess of freedom? Okay. What would it be? I'm not disagreeing. I'm just curious. You know, what would it be? Can women have too many rights? We think men have too many rights. It's called white privilege, male white privilege. How do we balance the playing field? How do we kind of level everything out so that people feel included and not excluded? And isn't this kind of dicey? So far, how many of you would think that you're leaning more towards libertarian sexual morality rather than traditional sexual morality? Raise your hands, it's okay. Yeah. And yet I noticed on Monday, I think almost all the hands went up when I asked about traditional sexual morality. Go ahead. Personally, I'm like way too sensitive and like probably had really bad jealousy issues, so I couldn't do an open relationship. Or like Okay. Now what you just did there is you just laid all your cards out on the table. Sure, I mean if that's part of what's going on for you, you need to let people know that. I've let I've let people know that. I mean it it, it is what it is. And by the way, it's not just between heterosexual couples. It happens between female female and male male. It happens. Jealousy is an issue we have to deal with in life. It is what it is. So if I laid the foundation enough to go on. 